no me llegue esta. A very warm welcome to the ninth session of our refresher course on Indian folk culture, as we set forth on a captivating exploration of North Indian folk culture. We have journeyed through the vibrant heartlands of India's diverse folk traditions, and now we find ourselves at the threshold of a region steeped in history, mystic, and artistic brilliance. The North of India is a tapestry of cultures, an East thread woven with tales of valor, devotion, and artistic splendor. This session promises to be an exhilarating ride through the folklore, music, dance, and craft that define the very essence of this remarkable part of our nation. We have discussed the theoretical aspects of the folk culture, the music. We have really enjoyed the melodies associated with the folk uh, music and all. Today in this session, uh, Dr. Suman is going to talk about the oral traditions in the folk of of uh, specifically she'll be focusing on Himachal Pradesh and uh, Haryana, where she'll be talking about the sustainable development, women's status, as well as the mental well-being. You know how uh, all these issues, they are also associated with uh, folk and how you know that can help into all these things. Um, as we delve into this North Indian folk culture, let us keep our hearts and minds open to the treasure that awaits us. Together, we will unravel the stories and experiences that have shaped the ethos of this magnificent region. Thank you for joining us in this journey, and I look forward to our shared exploration of the captivating North Indian folk culture. Now, before we proceed, I'll take this opportunity to let you know a bit about uh, the speaker of today's session, Dr. Suman. Uh, you know, it was really uh, nice getting connected to her. She's such a uh, you know, nice human being. Uh, she is an associate professor uh, in the Department of School of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. She has almost 18 years of teaching experience. She is also uh, a visiting researcher at Stanford University. She has four books to her credit and almost 60 research papers published in the journals of National International Repute, uh, Scopus Index, UGC Care Listed, Web of Science, Mark, and all. Uh, she has also, you know, uh, been presenting papers into national and international conferences, and I think the number goes beyond 60. She also has completed uh, many projects as uh, the investigator or as the co-investigator on oral history and religion of Himachal or Haryana and some other issues related to gender and religion also. She has also been a part of the committee, uh, committees where she has developed courses and taught them. She is also involved into the administrative activities um, and uh, the list goes on. So I'm not going to you know, mention those. She too has many awards and fellowships uh, to her credit. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, ma'am, we are really, you know, uh, happy and uh, privileged that you, you know, you, you know, uh, took time from your schedule and, uh, you know, you are going to uh, really talk about all these important issues like sustainable development, which is the need of the our mental well-being. I think we should talk about this. And uh, the most important and interesting part, which I found is that how these issues, which we consider the most modern things, you know, the, uh, the, the recent uh, issues which have been introduced to us and how you are going to relate them with the folk culture, specifically of Himachal Pradesh and uh, Haryana. So now without any uh, further delay, I'll uh, you know, request you to please start the session. I hand over this virtual mic to you, ma'am, please. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Priyanka. Thank you for inviting me and such a warm welcome. Uh, I didn't couldn't recognize myself when you introduced me. <laughs> but th uh, still, thank you so much. I'll share the screen. I hope I make, uh, you know, some sense uh, of, uh, you know, what I'm going to present. So let's hope, you know, I can make these connections. Uh, somehow I'm not able to present this. I wanted to share my screen. Just a moment. Should I send the... Ravinder, can you please tell? Uh, Ma'am, uh, you have all the rights to share the screen. You just keep your PPT uh, open. One second. Sure. Does it work? Can you see it? Uh, then I'll make it. Yes. All right. Yes. 
Okay, great. Please call me Suman. It seems that, uh, you know. <laughs> yes, sorry, Dr. Suman. It's uh, visible and it's very beautiful. <laughs> All right, great. So, yes. Why I begin with this slide is that, uh, you know, these are the things that we have been doing. You know, these are part of our field notes and, uh, and you know, basically represent the folk. So uh, we talk about the stories that people remember or the songs that people remember. So basically I focus on North Indian, Himachal, Haryana, and oral narratives. So these might be the songs, these might be the stories. I may not be talking more about the stories, but I may, you know, uh, I'll discuss what we could do and what we could realize when we did our research and all that. So uh, I hope I can make those connections, you know, the practical impacts of the oral culture and all. So this is uh, in, uh, near our campus at uh, in Himachal. This is a lake called Parashar Lake. It's rather becoming famous now. However, it has uh, these uh, ecological impacts also these days because of the number of the influx of tourists to this particular lake and the development that has happened. I'm just focusing on one, although there are others as well. So this Parashar, this whole mountain, it is at the top of a mountain. So the whole mountain has developed cracks and uh, the water is seeping in and these are not very small cracks, but rather huge cracks. And this lies at a place which is open to, uh, which invariably sees uh, you know, uh, cloud bursts almost every other year. This year, you must have read the news and you know heard and watched everything, the natural disasters that uh, unfolded in Himachal. So this is one part of it. And we may have a natural disaster hoping happening soon uh, because this is uncontrollable. You know, those cracks will develop. And once if there is a flash flood or there is a cloud burst, the whole mountain side is likely to fall and block a very narrow water channel. And if that is, you know, blocked with the debris and with the landslide mud and all, it will flood the villages around. And these are, you are talking of very poor people uh, with very limited resources and, uh, you know, no help at all. Any help that comes to them comes to them because IIT Mandi is located at that particular spot. Or, or it happens to fall, at least a bit of it, uh, on a road which uh, becomes the major road to travel to Kulu uh, if the national highway is blocked. So you can understand the, you know, the importance of the place also. So uh, let me begin with the presentation that was just a little background on why we need to focus on the oral narratives for sustainable development. So the rapid movements of this, to, uh, and this, if you can see a little, there is a little floating island. It floats from side to side. We couldn't believe it till we went actually there to see it different during seasons. Yes, it floats. So that's very interesting. That's why, you know, and it's a holy. So you can see this pagoda style temple also uh, on its banks. That is the uh, where Parasha Rishi is supposed to have meditated. So this rapid movements of this tiny floating island in the small remote mountainous lake in Himachal Pradesh across the lengths of the lake, unheard of in recent memory, because it's moving very rapidly now. So it used to, you know, very go very slowly. You couldn't see it in months. But if you visited like a few months later, you would see that it has moved. But now it's it was moving during Corona very rapidly. So and unheard of in recent memory are announced as the signs of current troubled times. The movement is also heralded as the signal of even tougher things to come besides the prevailing pandemic. So that was during the pandemic and afterwards also. The gods have spoken or rather shown what men have brought upon themselves. And such stories are rather a norm than an exception in this remote Himachal Pradesh, where till very recently, outsiders and external influences were a rarity. Even now, only a few paths have opened up thanks to successive state governments pushed to increase tourism by involving the locals. The belief in and fear of the gods appears natural given their, sorry, my eyes becoming older now. Complete dependency on nature in every aspect of life and limited reach of modern amenities. So 
uh, when we talk about the oral, the oral traditions include, I'll just touch upon, you know, what is oral, just to refresh, I, although I'm sure nobody reads, needs refreshing during this course. Folk tales, myths, folk songs, popular sayings, proverbs, riddles, uh, tongue twisters, life histories, historical narratives. So, and why are they important? Because they are the common currency of social interaction. So oral traditions include folklore, the lore, the traditional knowledge, and the beliefs, uh, which have no commonly no written language and generally trans uh, transmitted by the word of mouth. So we look at, yeah, sorry, intersection of oral history, folklore with religion in Kulu and Mandi, and how it affects the environment and sustain, uh, development, sustainable development. Folklore and traditional knowledge in Himachal teaches us ecological balance. Sorry, I need to, you know, shift this. Can you shift this, uh, you know, on the side a little bit? I can't even see my own presentation. The pictures and all, every, everything is coming on the side. If you can minimize it, that also will be great. Uh, I think in your view, or you can do that, no? The slide option, yeah. you can change that. View uh, somewhere, this shows at the top. The at the top, is, there is a mark. Uh, this view, right? If you click on that one, so mm -hmm. you know, it will That's show. Where? Yes. At yeah. the top of the screen, stream right side. Sign in, view. No, it doesn't show me that. I'm sorry. I can only see this. Okay. Okay, great. Lovely. I'm sorry. <laughs> Teaches us ecological balance and sustainability, where oral narratives often play a pivotal role of harnessing the relationship between the communities, individuals, and the environment, and strengthens the relationship between these three. Similar stu similarly, studies conducted in Haryana suggest folklore and folk songs has an important role to play in the well-being of women in villages of all towns. So uh, in Himachal, we do not go into caste and gender because it's very entrenched and we didn't want to do that. But in Haryana, since a lot of work has been done, we wanted to look at the mental uh, health of elderly women and women in general in villages and towns. So the focuses are a little bit different, but uh, uh, the commonality is the oral narratives. So if we, I give the background to Himachal, called the Dev Bhumi or the Lord, uh, Land of the Gods, it has a fragile ecosystem of the seismically vulnerable Himalayan region and the balance between the man and the natural ecosystem, which has been maintained over generations in, is under threat due to the new buzzword, which is development. It has a tough terrain and strong dependence on nature, which has shaped the people's approach towards life as well as their belief systems. So one way to understand how this balance has been maintained would be to understand the belief system via the prevalent myths of the region. It, these should also answer mm, the complications arising out of this development. For Haryana, again, literally, you know, translating as Hariana or the abode of the gods, the state is an important agricultural state for a country. You know, it uh, financially it contributes. Economically, it contributes quite a bit to the um, uh, GDP, etc. The folk narratives illustrate the play of the hegemonic masculinity in the patriarchal structuring that creates and consolidates the male power. Highlights several hierarchies of masculinities, caste, class, and gender. So we focus on gender. We do not focus on any, everything else. So they sing, you know, the women sing against masculinities but they also sing for their well-being. So we are looking at the positive aspect of it rather than the negative aspect. The community singing plays an important role in the lives of women sing residing in Haryana. They sing a variety of folk songs, such as spiritual and religious songs for special occasions. These special occasions can be you know, uh, related to marriage rituals, related to birth of a child, birth of a son, uh, then... And the weddings, uh, during various you know vrats and all the fastings, fasting for a child, for the husband less. Uh, uh, I believe women in Haryana are a little more developed 
uh, in the sense that they don't believe as much that fasting for the life of a husband will increase his life. But yeah, they do have songs for that also. And songs that reflect the contemporary concerns like health, gender, politics, and COVID-19. I uh, mentioned COVID-19 in particular because during uh, we conducted the study during that time as well, uh, just to see how women are coping because you know those public spaces where women could gather were suddenly inaccessible to them since women couldn't go out, couldn't go out to meet in the parks, etc., to and sing together. So it has a special mention here because of that reason. So. <clears throat> Uh, what we do is we see how uh, the look at the intersection of ecology and religion and document the nature of concern for the environment within the context of the centrality of environment and religion in everyday lives of the, you know, the lived realities of the people of Himachal. And uh, we try and fathom the intricate interconnections between religion, identity, and location. And... Uh, the other one is we examine the folk songs for mental health and well-being. If you look at uh, the picture on the top, that is from our field work in Haryana, in Rohatak. So uh, these are, you know, the women coming together to sing in the evenings. And if you look at the picture uh, below, this is one of the most important, uh, you know, rituals, which happens uh, a few years. Uh, it's called a Kahika ceremony where, and I'll talk the, about this a little later, uh, where, you know, the gurus come together, the uh, mediums through which the gods in Himachal talk, they come together and announce what might happen in future and the near coming future to the people. So, you know, they are like the warning systems, they provide justice and all. So we look at the role of oral, oral narratives in dissemination of the prob uh, problematic societal notions such as misogyny, patriarchy, etc. But we also look at the positive effects of group activities like singing the folk songs on mental health and region specific. Uh, however, our studies are very region specific. So I have been mentioning Himachal and Haryana only. Uh, although this can be done and I'm sure this is being done, uh, done in other places as well. So if we talk about you know the oral narratives and the traditional ecological knowledge that is disseminated through them, we see that the contribution of, uh, it has been studied, the contribution of uh, traditional ecological knowledge to build a social ecological resilience and sustain, uh, to build that as well as to sustain biodiversity. Uh, the studies have been done. Again, the role of oral narrative history in the development of environmental concerns is all, has also been studied by Hussey and Thompson. Our studies link oral traditions with ecology. So there have been social cultural studies and all, but this has been missing. So that is what interested me uh, particularly, how you know uh, these oral narratives or oral traditions have effects for ecology and how can they help that? There is an urgency also to document and analyze this indispensable information that would perhaps be lost to both environmentalists and the policymakers. Uh, and as you can see, post this uh, July and August fiasco in Himachal Pradesh, how important these are. Although uh, we don't know how much of it has been learned because we hear that uh, more of, uh, you know, Shimla Shil, uh, hills are being opened up for development even now. So imperative to the way the sustainable development can go ahead by taking changing perceptions and ground realities that are deeply rooted in religion, uh, in these accounts. So what we see is how people have maintained over generations, you know, over years and years, and how these can be uh, of use in today's times. So, and why is it necessary to do that? It is necessary to study the community's histories as reflected in their myths and folklore to understand the society, changes therein, and the transmission of culture, beliefs, and concerns. And as faith or spirituality that people have has preserved the vital function, has served the vital function of preserving the ecology and keeping it sustainable, uh, we hypothesize that cultural and social dimensions to traditional approaches to environment are reflected in the rituals and practices and shown by means of oral discourses. So uh, 
seen as living entities. You can see the gods here in the picture uh, below where the people are sending. That is a fair which happens every year in Mandi. Uh, so this is a Shivratri festival where all the local gods and deities, everybody comes together uh, in the Mandi town. They are invited specifically. So these are seen as living entities. The much revered gods are called upon by the people in both personal and community matters. When they go out visiting the deities, the gods and goddesses, they are seen as celestial kings in the hands of a dedicated posse. So you can see the people around them as well. It's, there are like 50 people coming together. However, the caste plays a strong role in the temple hierarchy and even access to the deity. The deity called Devta is either a regent or a savior or a, a rishi, like a Parasha rishi, that same picture above. Depicted as avatars are manifestations of the original god, the devtas are believed to bestow health, wealth, well-being when they are happy and lead to disasters and misery or create havoc due to their dissatisfaction. The devtas talk through a man named Devan or Gur, who begins by saying, I am the deity, as the mind of the former supposedly joins the latter. Uh, this oracular method works in both the temple or the sanctuary grounds. So the uh, if you can see the grounds around, uh, those are sacred. People are not supposed to go into the lakes. Uh, in the next picture is also another sacred lake called Sarolsar Lake. So uh, the waters are holy. Nobody is supposed to go in. Uh, the uh, And uh, there is a reason also besides the holiness because there is no other water source in the surrounding, you know, uh, maybe five kilometer radius or so. So that's why the importance of the lakes as well. And they become holy, so people try and preserve these lakes. There is a, a very healthy fear of the gods there. or And some other specific locations set by the Devanarda Guru. They listen to the prayers and the requests of the people and offer their judgments on behalf of the deity. So these are the important functions that are, you know, given to a devta. In recent history, we have also come across uh, how the devtas have spoken against uh, various projects from coming from the state government. One in particular in Kulu, uh, where the government wanted to, you know, in collaboration with a foreign funding agency to develop uh, the hill slopes as ski slopes. However, given the fragility of the, you know, the slope structure and all, and the ecosystem, the devtas came together and sp said that uh, um, uh, this is not something that should be done here. They do not require such uh, development and the um, government had to actually scrap that and it has happened for a dam as well. I, uh, these are the pictures you know, of the gods and the goddesses and how they bring in and they express their joy and sorrow. They meet each other as well, the devtas, uh, you know, hug each other and dance and, you know, make merry as well. So why this method is, you know, why is it important, especially oral and oral history? It's a, uh, because it helps in recording, preserving and interpreting the past events related to personal, communal, local and environmental issues. It may include stories, as I said earlier, myths, songs, folklores, passed down the generations. So as they are passed down the generations, they also you know, uh, inculcate in them those knowledge, the traditional knowledge, which help them survive these very uh, hostile natural conditions. It is the medium through which knowledge in a community is continued and preserved, while at the same time reflects the changes that take place in this knowledge pool with the passage of time. So I'll, and the myths surrounding these daisies abound. And they fill, fulfill, as uh, Melinowski says, an indispensable uh, function of expresses, enhances, and codifies belief, safeguards and enforce, enforces the morality, vouches for the efficiency of the ritual, and contains practical rules for the guidance of man, a vital ingredient of the human civilization, a hard-worked active force, a pragmatic charter of primitive faith and moral wisdom. So it's very much there, and you can visible there in Himachal. Being spiritual goes hand in hand with being religious in this predominantly Hindu state. Both this rough terrain and this strong dependence on nature have shaped this belief system as well as their approach towards life. So their myths are not an aimless outpouring of vain imaginings, but a hardworking, extremely important cultural force. And we will see in another example from uh, you know, the state itself, 
this is in a place called Jugindar Nagar. Uh, there was a huge landslide, if anybody remembers. Uh, it's a place called Kotrupi. So on the road between Mandi and Pathankot, that is a national highway, at a village named Kotrupi, a massive landslide occurred on 13th August 2017. This was a slope failure which swept around uh, the vehicles 800 meters down the slope. Even now, if you you know see uh, visit that place, you can see the scars because the hill is as bare and uh, you know it's as rocky. I went there, I think, in March this year again. Uh, it's as bare and it's as difficult. And there were lands, smaller landslides during this rainy season as well. A bus couldn't even, you know, they couldn't even found, uh, find the mangled remains of the bus that was swept away. So approximately 300 meters of the highway was completely buried under the debris. 46 people died, but locals escaped unheard. Those on the villages, you know, those who were on the slope, they escaped completely. And we will see how. The residents of the Kotropi village escaped unhurt because the local deity of the village, who was named Hurang Narayan, had asked the people to evacuate the village a few hours before the incident. So none of the villagers died. These were the people, and this was the bus, uh, which had stopped uh, at midnight. So it happened during uh, around 12 o'clock at night, 12, 12.45. Uh, they had stopped for tea. There was a tea stall there. And uh, it was swept away. And you know, it was very sudden, this landslide. And uh, 300 meters is a huge, huge uh, you know, portion of it. So these are called the acts of God by the people. And interestingly, too high intensity landslide had previously struck the village in 1977-97. So you can see it happens every two decades. The local communities, relying on their knowledge, knew and feared what was coming, but it prepared, so it prepared them for an impending disaster. This institution of Devi Devta, prevalent all over the state, is a system of governance of daily life, as we see. So activities of people are guided by these Devi Devta institution in Kotropi also. Uh, we interviewed, um, you know, we had semi-structured interviews, so we interviewed a lot of people around. One of the Anganwadi workers, she said, our residents of a village escaped unheard during the 2017 by God's grace, which we, they call Dev Taki Krupa. Although the landslide claimed around 48 lives, none of them were from Kotropi or, or its adjoining villages. Another says it is this local knowledge developed over generations and passed orally that helps us in forecasting the occurrence and immensity of such natural disasters. Studies have been done, scientific studies as well. So uh, what the people said was that during this last Kahika fair, just before this 2017 major landslide when it occurred, before this, there was this Kahika fair where Hurang Narayan, through his gurus, said, told them that, uh, you know, uh, the sins have increased and so on and so forth, and there will be a major landslide. So, but in actuality, people believed that, obviously, and, you know, uh, they told the administration also not to develop the road below and all that. Uh, but they were also looking at the signs because they live there, they have lived there, they have this local knowledge, uh, what starts, you know, giving way, when to move from a certain place and all. So uh, they have developed those senses and those uh, that knowledge over generations and it is passed down from over, obviously, through the generations. So they knew that a major landslide was about to happen. Everybody left their houses even, you know, uh, as late as that night itself by around 10 or so, that there is uh, all this will fall down. The local administration, they came down to Monday to talk to the local administration that something big is ha about to happen. But nobody believed because they used terms like our devta has said this. Hamare devta ne bola hai. Hamare devta aay the gur mein aur hamare gur ke thru unhayunne ye bola hai. So they couldn't, you know, express it in scientific terms, but it had a scientific, uh, you know, reason also behind it. So these landslides are, you know, like scars. So a telltale signature of the stress slope faces what is about to happen in Parashur, basically. So scars of pre-existing minor landslides make a particular slope more vulnerable to a major landslide. Kotropi also falls under the same category. So minor landslides occur over a period of time, creating a cluster of scars, and eventually, with the help of triggering factor, which can be, you know, uh, rock cutting or land cut 
below to make way for um, maybe a house, maybe a road or something. It leads to complete slope failure and the whole slope comes down. So the need of the R is the helical soil nails, which can stabilize the given slope because they produce a greater interface uh, friction between soil and the nail than the conventional soil nails. So this is from, you know, we didn't do it, uh, but other studies, scientific studies have been done on the region. It is, uh, so it also, however, points to another impending disaster. That the, because of the fragile slope, the condition may shortly uh, occur, cause another event of the same intensity. Although the locals believe that it will happen uh, another two decades later. However, there are rumblings now again that something major may occur sooner because of the, you know, the immoral or the sinful nature of the people, increasing tourism, increasing money-mindedness of the people. So it's everything is related to that. When tested, the slope reduction factor was 0.77 pre-event and decreased to 0.54, and it is increasing as, again. So this decrease indicates the enhanced vulnerability of the same slope under heavy rainfall and a potential for a new landslide with the same scale shortly. So if you look at um, the nature, it is a manifestation of the divine for the people there. Oral traditions and religious, uh, religio-cultural beliefs proven to have the potential to solve a number of ecological and conservation problems. The strong dependence of nature and the tough terrain have influenced their belief systems. And the discussing uh, the significance of nature, another uh, you know respondent, he opines, we Hindus consider the Nadis and Kunds, Kunds are the lakes, as manifestations of God. So this is not just one of the smaller lakes. It's not even a significant lake, what I'm talking about, the Parasha. There are others, you know, there is Sarolsa, there, uh, uh, there is another one which has very interesting tales to it. I, it just slipped my mind, the name of that lake. It is supposed to, you know, whoever fishes, or it is supposed to be a very rich lake because people come there and throw money into it jewelry into it and it has happened over generations so whoever tries and uh to take out treasures out of that there are tales of even uh yeah kamru naglik sorry so there are tales of even a british officer who tried to uh, you know drag the lake for money he fell ill and died okay so uh this fear continues that uh you did this you know you played with the nature and the nature then reverted and gave a reply by killing somebody or murdering somebody or, you know, then there was this another story uh, afterwards in 80s or 90s that uh, one of the governors of Himachal Pradesh, he wanted the, you know, the uh, Kamrula, uh, this hill to be developed and they wanted to cut the trees. However, when he was visiting, somebody was visiting the uh, lake by helicopter, his helicopter crashed. So, you know, this fear is maintained because of this. So they say that we respect the Nadis and the Kuns. These are the manifestations of God. So we live by Jal Hi Jeevan Hai. So Jal as well as nature. So it's almost equivalence to the divine. We make offerings to the rivers in times of water crisis and offer our prayers to serve the needs of our future generations. So there is a healthy effort from the local community to preserve what is there. So you can see a lot of water but and not much for their daily needs also at times, let alone, uh, you know, irrigation or agriculture or any of those. So the research emphasizes the need to make uh, of making development sustainable and sustainability can happen only when local livelihood concerns, environmental concerns and protection of biodiversity are addressed. Religious beliefs and practices play an important role in the conservation of the natural resources and local or traditional knowledge addresses these concerns and thus plays a very crucial role in treading the right path to development. Also, upon analyzing a few scientific studies, especially in the case of Kotropi landslide, we have done this for Rivalsar Lake as well. We conclude that indigenous beliefs have always have some correlation with modern scientific reasoning. So that was, I hope, it made some sense. That was about Himachal. If we move on to, you know, Haryana, uh, we see uh, spiritual, again, same thing, religion and mental well-being. Both religion and spirituality are either articulated within groups 
or are influenced by some social reference groups. Religion incorporates a simultaneity of norms, beliefs, ritualized experiences, and faith groups that are regarded to be connected to a sublime being or a higher power. And spirituality is the individual's quest for finding a connection with the sublime or the sacred. And in many of the cases, and especially in our Hindu belief system, it happens through uh, nature as well. And is not considered a separate from religion, despite its in non-institutionalized nature, unlike religion. Spiritual religious practices have noteworthy effect on well-being, which is also evident in literature. Uh, 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 research literature. The spiritual, uh, the SR or the spiritual religious rituals for Hindus include meditation, chanting of mantras, study of scriptures, yoga, and observation of simple austerities like fasting. So I focus only on music and the folk songs in Haryana. The music is considered to be an important aspect of people's lives, perhaps an important, uh, as important as any other leisure activity. It helps enforce conformity to social norms, acts to validate social institutions and religious rituals, contributes to maintenance of cultural continuity and stability, and thus contributes in the integration of the society. It plays an important role in bringing people together, and this shared musical experience gives rise to a feeling of being part of something extraordinary and leads to emotional, social, and cognitive benefits. Uh, and why I focus on this is because if uh, that's how I began by saying that it's a very patriarchal society. Uh, so highly structured uh, around patriarchy, uh, very masculine. So women do not get those, um, although they are now getting, but traditionally women haven't been getting, especially in the rural areas, those spaces where they can come together and have a say, have a voice. So these practices of, you know, singing bhajans, satsang, uh, uh, singing folk songs, this provides, it's a matter of, you know, identity formation as well for them. So we look at the effectiveness of indigenous practices like satsang and other SR practices as interventions. Ordered community-based singing has the potential to positively impact the well-being of older people, especially women. The contents of these songs uh, provide psychological benefits for well-being and which hasn't been explored so far. There is a thing, uh, because most of the, even the, you know, whoever focuses on the oral, the folk, uh, the translation, they f focus on only those aspects, but not on how these have relevance to the people on the ground in their lived realities. There is a saying in Haryana that kos kos par pani badalo, teen kos par pani or teen kos par boli bhi, which literally translates into groundwater changes from mile to mile, while the dialect or the language changes at every three miles. So it shows the uh, number of dialects being spoken there. However, the multiplicity of the dialects uh, indicates the prevalence of the associated variety and the number of folk songs in these dialects as well, So, which are very important. However, you know, they can be clapped into various groups as well. So uh, there are those communities across these different, different dialects. In recent years, despite a growing consciousness regarding uh, women's contributions in the development of any society, relatively less exposure has been given to women's folkloristic work folk narratives and folk songs, typically the fundamental and innate expressions of women's inner selves and frequently the stories of their subjugation. So you may hear of, you know, a few stories as well, or the songs uh, during uh, the weddings where uh, women express their sexuality. Uh, you know, the songs as well as the jokes are full of sexual innuendos, but those are only very limited circles and where women, uh, men have done their best to suppress them. To, you know, uh, sometimes even, uh, men stand up during ceremonies and tell women not to talk about it because it puts them, the men, in a very uh, negative light. So that has also happened. So this is very important to study how, you know, uh, how folk songs are helping these women talk, express. It is through these folk songs that women project and represent their versions of the patriarchal world wherein they suffer resent, resist, and subvert the hegemonic and masculinist nature of their society. Mostly anonymous in authorship, 
It is believed that women's rural songs have developed naturally and have been passed from one generation to another with few alterations. Recently, we saw how they also make these songs, especially uh, during the Kisan movement, um, when uh, the farmers from Punjab, Haryana, and uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, Giraud, I would use the word Giraud, Delhi, and uh, you know, songs were made. They, and we could also see that uh, during Corona, made, they made songs, uh, folk songs around Corona. And we can see how it's developing also. So each one of them talks about, uh, I'll just, I'll not talk about the songs. If anybody has questions, I can talk about them later. Each of these songs talk about the indicators of the discontent in life. There is greed, desire, lust, ego, anger, attachment, materialism. And the result in suffering and the misery. So they talk about how these various, you know, uh, greed, etc., they uh, result in this immense suffering for people. One song mentions that happiness and harmony are the ultimate aims of life, and the pursuit of external material things stands in the way of these aims. So this inner peace and tranquility would be within reach with the help of a great teacher. So they look for a guru. This guru can be, you know, uh, some sage in history. This can, uh, in mythology, uh, in even as late as Swami Dayanand uh, of, uh, what is it? I'll, I've forgotten. Sorry, I am very bad with names and all. Another abounds with a strong message regarding the Arya Samaj. Sorry, yes, Swami Dayanand of Arya Samaj. <laughs> Another abounds with a strong message regarding the importance of having a spiritual guru and lavishes praises on the teacher. So this Guru Shishya Parampara, it continues in even the songs as well. Not just, you know, learning uh, maybe education as in literacy or anything, but uh, how... A guru can help attain moksha or calm or peace in life, maybe joy. The next folk song, uh, another folk song comments the virtues of leading a, leading a balanced life so as not to be led awry by either ups and downs of life. Another bhajan mentions that one year of life, liberation of the soul and hence inner peace and harmony is within reach uh, because of having found that one great guru. So the messages the singers or the elderly rural women are receiving are related to the importance of inner happiness, harmony, well-being, which are achievable by letting go of material things and personal desires, ego, greed, attachment. These are the songs that they talk of uh, um, and so on. A spiritual teacher is someone who can help them on this path of peace and joy, which is also you know where positive psychology also helps in. So there is a, uh, you know, positive psychology borrows from there as well and uh, helps in uh, us also in implementing these. So, oh, that was a very sudden, but that's how, where we, I stop. I hope I am within time also. Thank you. I can show more pictures as well. Yeah, that would be great if you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, these are, you know, the temples on you. Uh, I noticed one thing and everybody else also that, uh, you know, there are temples uh, on these inaccessible hills, which uh, the people from uh, the plains find difficult to reach if there are no roads or if they are not, uh, you know, decent cuttings. So uh, my belief is that they have that happens because uh, you know uh, gods are unattainable in a sense. So you have these uh, temples all over. These are the lakes, and you know uh, on the right side, if you see this picture, this is the Kamru Nag Hill, which is untouched even now. This it's a ten kilometer uh, huge uh, uh, trekking up to the um, lake. So only the locals go there or trekking enthusiasts. However, the locals still do not want this to be opened up. If you see something above, there's a structure, there's a, 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 something like a, a lake and a boat in it. That is the Rivalsar Lake, which is dying because of, you know, the religion. Uh, it's Rivalsar is holy to three religions, uh, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Buddhism. So... Uh, they forbid feeding the fishes. They forbid 
even dredging the lake and all. So because of all this and obviously the other activities that go on around the farming and uh, various other activities within its uh, reach from where the water comes in, it's actually dying. So it religion also, you know, has this potential to disturb, not just preserve. So that is very interesting. In the center, if you see, that is one of my scholars. She's working in uh, Haryana and on Haryana. So she's documenting Sanji and all these rituals and the oral narratives surrounding them. So this is one of the walls in Kurukshetra. Uh, this is the heritage village where she went and, you know, looked at this and documented this because uh, it's uh, now more... Uh, the ritual itself is now becoming a very um, less and less. All right, sorry. The ritual itself is, um, you know, uh, being followed less now because of the yeah, inaccessibility to, to the local materials. Same, other, you know, this is another Sanji on the walls at home in one of the villages. And other is the one where, again, in the heritage village there. So, yeah. I stop here. Uh, it, it talked about this Sanji. It would be better if you can tell uh, us a bit what exactly this uh, ritual is. So Sanji is, uh, you know, uh, worshipped as a goddess. So some call it a manifestation of Durga. Others, um, some other. So she is supposed to bring good husbands and good married life to girls. So it's a ritual by and for women in uh, villages. It starts around uh, in Navratras, uh, first Navratra and all. So the, uh, the women first make their own interpretation of Sanji on the wall. So it's done on the wall. Something uh, similar has been done for other places, other states, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and others, but n not uh, so much for Sanji. So Sanji, so uh, these women create these you know images on the walls of the goddess and then they create these structures so these structures are made of clay mud dung so the which they collect from the local you know these are the locally sourced materials so because they keep cattle they have dung uh, there are local uh, ponds you know, which are called jores in haryana so they bring clay from there and you know they make these star shaped structures out of them to fill in the uh, the whole uh, to make the dress to make the body everything out of it so that, and they sing songs and light a diya in the evening. So they sing songs and make an RC every day for nine days. And uh, at the end of it, they scrape the image off the walls, the women only, and young girls, unmarried girls. They scrape it off the walls and put it in a perforated pot, this matka, which has holes in it, put it there. Uh, there is generally a little image of a boy as well, which who is supposed to be this brother of the Sanji. So uh, there is the, um, this practice in Haryana that a married woman can be sent because of, you know, the you can see the power structure here, the um, patriarchy working. A married woman cannot go to her house, her parental home, um, a maternal home on her own the brother comes and requests the mother-in-law to send her back home because you know the family is missing her or anything so the mother-in-law gives permission and sends with the brother that's why this importance of brother in the whole uh haryana and you can see it you know the with the skewed number of uh, sex ratio also people want more and more sons rather than daughters so you generally has that image also, a little boy alongside. And when she has to come back to her in-law's place, as the husband has to go and bring her. So the father, uh, nobody sends her. So you have a male accompaniment, although that's changing in especially uh, the cities and all, but that's the general practice is even today in towns and villages of Haryana. So she, this structure is scraped off, the Sanji image of the Sanji is scraped off and put in that perforated pot along with the boy and sent across. It's like sending off Sanji to her maternal place across the pond, the Jor. 
and uh, there you know then the boys throw a little uh, boys or uh, girls throw stones at it because the idea and a uh, lighted diya is also placed in it the belief is that if a sanji uh, the spot uh, crosses the lake a calamity will fall on the village so they don't want that cal calamity to fall upon the village so they try and drown it and it's only for and by women and you know people uh, when we interviewed the women during uh, sanji they said that this is the only time when we can uh, go out talk to uh, each other express ourselves creatively as well so these uh, rituals and there are others also like this become very important means of uh, giving the women their space uh, their identity formation where they do not you know they do not talk about caste there can be many castes involved they do not talk about caste they do not talk about anything else just themselves their expression creative expression otherwise they are busy with maybe the cattle the fields uh, the kids and all but this is the time when they just focus on themselves their creativity so the colors the combination you know the jewelry if there is a mehndi on the hands everything they think of and they put on walls they discuss among themselves also at times but it's their own so this is like you know they take ownership as well that's why it's very important but it's a dying art again uh, yeah, i hope sure. i could make some sense yeah yeah i i at least i could yeah. understand i think all the participants to uh, you know like this yeah. uh e mujhe uh, gangor hota hai rajasthan mein मुझे उसकी याद दिला रहा है बिकॉज उसमें भी यही होता है कि वही नाइन डेज वो इसमें जैसे कार्विंग कर रहे हैं या वो बना रहे हैं वहां पे वो वही मिट्टी वही गोबर और लेप से वो गुड़िया बनाते हैं गनगोर उसको सजाते हैं अच्छे से पूरा मेहंदी से ब्यूटीफुली एंड उसकी पूजा करते हैं सांझ उसको बोलते हैं जब शाम के टाइम पे वो गीत गा के उसकी पूजा करते हैं गनगोर एंड लास्ट में वही ही जैसे आपने बोला लास्ट में कुएं में dal dete hain yeah uh, and yeah very true uh, this tradition uh, you know it has been you know in uh, rajasthan also ki yeah. bhai uh, biro lene yes. aayega to wo lene aayega agar aapko apne meke jana hai to and pavna is the husband mm -hmm. uh, agar aapko sasural jana hai to wo aayega and there are so many folk songs also which talk about ki acha tum jao tumhare sasur ji lene aaye hain to ladki bole ki nahi mujhe nahi jana mujhe nahi jana ajay ji aaye nahi nahi mujhe nahi jana acha devar aaya nahi mujhe nahi jana yes your husband aaya okay now i'll get ready and i'll go yes then i'll we have the same so i'll talk about this but i did not say the exact same uh, song i did not mention it because i want to talk about what this they do but we have also that ki mujhe nahi jana sajan aaye hain to jana hai ya pe jana hai yeah yeah um because you know uh, yesterday also we had this um, a folk mm. tradition from uh, uh, mumbai maharashtra okay. so i think you know the place changes the language the dialect jaise bola apne har us pe pani ab boli badal jati hai so aya it changes but i think jo main crux hai jo main soul of folk hai that remains same that remains same uh, uh, dr suman acha hoga if you can say some songs on greed desire ego anger and also okay. from there a few songs <laughs> that would be great you know i think okay i'll uh, just open this and yes i will okay so the song goes like this i'll show you sakhi ye panch bade balwan vichar rahe sansar mein so these are lobh mo क्रोध काम अहंकार सो ग्रीड अटैचमेंट एंगर लास्ट एंड ईगो मोस्ट पावरफुल वॉइस इन द वर्ल्ड दे आर मोस्ट पावरफुल फोर्स ऑफ मैन काइंड सो यू नो द सॉन्ग गोज ऑन लाइक दिस दैट द वॉइस ऑफ मोह लीड्स टू एक्सेसिव अटैचमेंट आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग ऑफ द सॉन्ग बिकॉज आई डोंट नो हाउ मच ऑफ इट विल बी इट विल मेक सेंस बिकॉज इट्स इन हरियाणी to others so i'll just translate it a little bit and tell you so uh, leads to, uh, with the uh, excessive attachment and involvement with the family and the world and uh, results in the neglect of the spiritual life crowd results in irrational behavior quarrels and violence and destroys peace so calm is sinful and its calm is that is lust and its overcome is uh, outcome is shame and misery so one does not care for the social norms or respect and dignity and degrades oneself uh, again the other one is anand ke loot 
रखा जाने हमारे सतगुरु के दरबार में सो सतगुरु इज दिस डिवाइन टीचर सो दे से दैट इवन दोज हु पावर इन पैलेस ऑल्सो रिमेन अनहैपी अंकल ब्रादर एंड ऑल एल्डर्स ऑल्सो फेस द कोर्ट्स एंड द केसेस सो वाई आर देर वॉन्डरिंग इन वेन इन दिस वर्ल्ड even those people who amass great wealth did not find peace neither this material world nor the barren jungle can offer peace to your soul so sant kabir so this is the satguru is the kabir discover the precious treasure and enjoy the pleasure of the teachings of our satguru so uh, again there is another one which says mere uh, tar hari sang jode aisa koi sant mile so i need some spiritual leader who will uh connect me to the lord hmm. then uh, there is another one which begins ja tere ho bhakti mein dhyan so uh, the bhajan talks about the ups and downs of life sociological conditions in india you know if, uh, if there is a daughter in your destiny don't lose heart because having the daughter is supposed to be the biggest calamity nor feel proud if you are blessed with a son oh man if you are his true devotee do not show your tears to the world when you suffer loss by chance if you happen to meet poverty on your way never let the world humiliate you if you are graced with wealth do not laugh at others o true servant of god keep walking on that spiritual path so uh, this was the literal translation we just did that uh, and guru ji mera aisa lagya dhyan so because of the guru this is from rs maj actually so he, he goes on to talks about moksha which is the ultimate goal and uh, it talks of a seeker who has found a guru and acknowledges his own spiritual limitations and he beseeches the guru uh, to lead him on a path of salvation and liberation and they talk of then another one talks of uh, rishi muni hey dear friend and sister so because this is among uh, you know uh, women only so sister those spiritual gurus and saints have rightly said that the almighty god lives within the soul it goes on to illustrate that the way to that place in the soul where he resides the god is achievable through meditation and self exploration only and exhorts the people that since no physical or human system of veins and bloods exist in the pursuit of god do not waste time on this flesh and its demands so and uh, you know interestingly talks of this om as the soap a <laughs> fragrant om soap so uh, it was a very interesting song also then there is another song that mentions happiness and harmony as the ultimate aim of life uh, uh it says that uh, you know uh, where is that song uh, just let me see i have another which is actually the whole song just a moment mm, yeah i had them open so there are too many things open at the moment found it mm -hmm. ah this is very interesting you know uh gender discrimination veer hum amma ke jaye re lot the lote the ek sharir ke lote the ek sharir ke किस्मत न्यारी न्यारी रे सो वी ले इन द सेम वूम बट आर डेस्टिनीज आर डिफरेंट वी आर सेम बर्थ सेम मदर गिव बर्थ टू अस बट आर डेस्टिनीज आर डिफरेंट सो दिस इज वॉट अ सिस्टर से इज टू द ब्रदर बीर हम एक माँ के जाए वी बोथ आर बॉर्न ऑफ द सेम मदर्स वूम येट आर फेट्स आर डिफरेंट यू आर गिवन फ्रेश एंड न्यूट्रिशियस फूड मिल्क एंड अदर प्रिवलेज सच एस सोप एंड एक्सपेंसिव क्लॉथ्स you also wear nice clothes and go to school on the other hand i have to eat stale and leftover food with buttermilk i do household work like making dung cakes and have no time for a bath yet i am scolded by all the family members however the brother also replies he is very perceptive in the song at least don't get hurt sister i'll provide you with all the privileges nice clothes soap and nutritional food and will also send you to school so again marriages कौन सा तो हारा लाडो कौन सा है जीत्या कौन से के 
पद रहे पासने सो इट कैनवे द ब्राइड फादर इज अ लूजर एंड द ब्राइड ग्रूम फादर इज अनर सो द ब्राइड क्वेरीज शी आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन uh on about her you know what is the status of the two and the mother replies lado your grandfather father and uncles mama chacha phupha have been losers and bridegrooms grandfather father and uncles have been the winners your father in law has been fortunate since the time he was blessed with a son whereas your father has been considered unfortunate since the birth of a daughter beti ke baat sada hi that's how you know you have a saying in haryana i'm sure this is it there in other places uh contiguous places at least so the daughter's father is always inferior and they talk of imbalance sex ratio i did mention the imbalance sex ratio for the same reason they talk of one of the songs urja urja re kaale re ka kaale se ka uh, uh, there is this uh, birth of a son Uh, is being celebrated and the mother sends this message across to her mothers the overwhelmed mother on the birth of a son implores the crow with these words fly o black crow and take my message along with you tell my mother that i am blessed with a son nandalal so they call him the nandalal uh, akin to krishna tell my bhabhi that god has graced me with nandalal tell my sister that nandalal has come in, in my house now i'm waiting for my pilia so obviously this you know another important ritual is the pilia where uh, the her family would bring in gifts for everybody as well as clothes for the baby and herself so um, you know these are the songs that there is another one new the duniya sari jaan bete kaisi dah konya so again same thing uh, eulogizing the son over the daughter o oh, beta don't ignore me like this don't treat me poorly i have demoted so this is a mother telling the son i have devoted my entire life to you i have gone through a lot of pain and tough times to bring you up for you i even starved left alone spices for your health i brought you up in the best way i could against all odds i made you a graduate at the time of your engagement and marriage i showered all my blessings and celebrated with sweets but it gives me immense pain to see your rudeness indifference and bitter words after all. after all i am your mother so uh, and this goes on if you wish i can talk about more <laughs> but you know hum sunte rahe hain like uh, jaisa hamari uh, colleague mobin unhone bhi bola ki a very practical and you know real references you have given so we we feel connected that you know we can relate with all these ideas which you are i talking. hope i could make some you know sense there <laughs> Yeah. yeah all the messages they are saying this only uh, so uh, just one uh, thing uh, mm-hmm. obviously like uh, there would be questions from other participants also when you were talking about gur uh, in himachal pradesh like uh, they are considered that they are the spokesperson of god who yeah, said yes. so uh, like is this really works in the same way just a jab woh ek kuch problem aaya tha when you talk about that landslide mm-hmm. so they said that hamare guru ne bola unki kripa thi so how does it really happen look you, you told me the scientific thing that i could really get yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i could understand yeah. but jo guru wala baat tha mujhe thoda samajh mein nahi aaya like how that is working okay uh, that is you know for anything as small as a child getting fit mm-hmm. okay uh, they would go not go to a doctor first they would go to the temple first so the priest there the gur that is the gur mm-hmm. okay so the priest there would tell them that this is because of uh, some you have jhutan they call it jhutan you must have done something wrong ate outside you know uh, that's how the caste is also you know uh, again um, enforced that you must have in, uh, transgressed that's why the child is getting fits so you need to then placate the gods listen to them and do this so for bigger things also if there are fights between two families and all they don't go to the courts first they first go to the gur and it still occurs at least in the interior they still do that so somebody can be very educated and you know in the sense of getting degrees and maybe earning and maybe doing a job but they will still again go to the same system because they still have much more faith there then go to the um, the police or the court or anything 
so that's why the police they are very happy they say and i have spoken to them uh, my student uh, husband uh, is a policeman uh, he holds a high position there so he says we don't actually have to worry about law and order because they fear the gods anyways so and yeah. if somebody you know commits murder well will they run to okay so it's so it's a much much lived reality there i think the word which you used uh, and i really liked healthy fear that is really working there fear mat karo bhagwan gussa ho jayenge fear mat karo tumhe kop milega kop milega bilkul so abhi bhi ye landslides ho rahi thi unka bhi karan yahi tha ki bahut zyada manali mein itni gadbad hui hai manali mein itna destruction hua hai this is what the local people said ki isliye hua hai kyunki wahan ke log bahut zyada greedy ho gaye hain वो बाहर वालों को फ्रीज कर रहे हैं तो इस वजह से हुआ है इट्स स्टिल दैट नैरेटिव या मैम सॉरी डॉक्टर सिमन व्हेन यू टॉक्ड अबाउट दैट यू नो हाउ दी सॉन्ग्स यू नो हाउ थ्रू म्यूजिक विमेन दे रियली यू नो फाइंड दैट अ काइंड ऑफ मेन और वेयर दे कैन टॉक अबाउट देयर सप्रेस्ड फीलिंग्स एंड डिजायर्स सो अगेन आई जस्ट वांट टू शेयर वन थिंग इवन इन राजस्थान जब शादी होती है तो एक रिचुअल होता है जहां पे लड़के के फादर को या जो उधर सबसे बड़ा उस फैमिली में होता है उनको लेडी के कपड़े पहनाए जाते हैं एंड चीता समथिंग उनको बोला जाता है सो यू नो एवरी टाइम आई यूज टू लिसन टू दैट यू नो दिस आइडिया ऑफ दिस मेंटल वेलबींग बिकॉज यू नो वी ऑल्सो से दैट वेन वी सप्रेस एनी काइंड ऑफ इमोशन so you know that is not really good so i think that also gives that you know platform to vent out Uh, exactly. you know okay ask to wapas lo jo like what exactly. people are getting uh, at that time and that to in front of everyone they say that one yeah. so i think yeah these are some platforms which you know are really you know um, good because you know uh, in specifically in rajasthan haryana uh, because i know about these two places this is a uh, thoda zona mm-hmm. so i have seen that how the women voice that has been suppressed you know mm-hmm. they are not supposed to you know even speak bol diya na nahi bas so you know that has been the thing i have seen that in my locality in my uh, neighborhood also so you know when they say that and i was like itna openly matlab aise ekdam se bol raha hai and and uh, i feel that yes that's really good for the mental health because they get to vent out that one uh same there is one more tradition would be ritual uh, i don't know the na- name would be different in haryana tudia jab uh, barat chali jati hai same uh, yes women no, khori hai ha so women are not allowed to go uh, barat yes. mein jaane ka ab okay. jaake change ho gaya ki women also go wo bhi bade wali nahi jati hain to nahi bachche hi jayenge ha to uh, this uh, like all the men they just go barat mein chale jate hain uh, ladke ki yeah. sari ladies piche reh jati hain तो वो दे डू एवरीथिंग जैसे वहां पे होता है ना कि भाई बारात पहुंची है फिर वो तोरण होता है yes. फिर फेरे होंगे एंड दे डू ऑल दीज थिंग्स सो आई थिंक अगेन यू नो इट शोज दैट यू नो दे विश टू पार्टिसिपेट इन टू दिस ऑल्सो वे दे हैव बीन एक्सक्लूडेड दे आर नॉट ए पार्ट ऑफ दिस थिंग बट बाई क्रिएटिंग दैट होल एनवायरमेंट देर इन दर हाउस दे आर वर्चुअली आई थिंक दे आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन टू दैट वन and so, this uh, you know this particular instance a uh, ritual in haryana mm-hmm. called khoria mm-hmm. so this khoria is very sexualized yeah you know you can't even listen if you aren't you know used to it from maybe early on mm-hmm. it's to such an extent because that is the only space where they are able to talk about it yes there are women, women are not supposed to be sexual they can't say that you know uh, uh, i have desires or i have mm-hmm. needs and all they can't so this is the space among women and when men have left so yeah. yes and that's also participatory in a sense very true uh, you know when i was a kid i started listening to that and you know it used to be very embarrassing because i was not really familiar with these situations okay. uh, and uh, because the men sexuality that has been a very taboo subject you, know, you can't even talk about that and there the women because as you said that this is their place you know there is no men this is the women territory okay absence of men is there so they talk very uh, very vocal they are about their sexual desires and all and uh, to some extent i also find that you know just you know it, it every time it uh, used to come to my mind that how much they are suppressing that when they are getting this opportunity they don't want to leave anything they just want to talk about everything and too openly and too clearly so uh, in a way you know uh, Uh, earlier i used to think that folk songs folk traditions folk music like yesterday mm. we talked about tamasha and mm. yeah. all 
and today in the next session we'll be talking about this uh shed londa and arch and something so you know uh my perspective is also changing. Uh, it's a four, uh, ninth lecture only, ninth session only. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, all these things, they are not only for entertainment, though they provide that also, but there is much, much more to that one. You know, you talked about that, how there are these issues which can really help us to make policies and which can really, you know, help us to, you know, take uh, actions before any kind of natural so calamity can yeah. happen. We can stop yes. that also we by can following stop that, that one. Yeah, True. and True. That, that is something, you know, I was not that aware of. So really, thank you for that. And I think this, you know, the, the work which you are doing by documenting such kind of, you know, uh, these oral traditions, I think that should be done. And I also think it should be submitted uh, so that, you know, the, the people in you know the administration and all, they can really take care of this and they can save, you know, many yeah. lives. And they can See, save many places. It's such also. a taboo, you know, uh, talking about mental health. You know, going to a site, uh, even in uh, so-called liberal and educated families, to go to a psychiatrist, it has stigma attached to it. So, you know, these are the interventions that can be followed at home with something that uh, need not be uh, shown as an intervention, but just a way of life. So, yeah. Uh Another thing which, uh, you know, uh, like when you talked about bhajan, when you talked about that, you know, how women, they sing songs specifically in praise of God and how all these things, they teach them also the value of peace, the value mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, peaceful life and all. Uh, so obviously that works towards this mental health because we talk about meditation. What does that do? It does say exactly the same thing, that it gives you peace and all. Peace and right? So uh, there has been bhajan also at the death of some elderly person. Agar koi insaan asti saal ka hoke ya super hoke ki death hoti hai, to Rajasthan mein us time pe bhajan hoote hai. I think that's the best way to tell people the art of dying also. Out of time, also. right? You know yeah. uh, that. Okay, it's increasingly uh, happening in Haryana also. Uh, I have. Yeah. I don't remember any bhajan, but uh, mm. jo crack sunta hota tha, wo yehi hota tha ki, matlab inhone sab kuch dekha. He saw a you know good life, yeah. pura family hasta khelta, pote par pote. Yes. Sab, sab inhone dekh liye. So obviously that is really you know uh, you know uh, art of living ki hum baat karte, art of dying ki you know sometimes it's missed. Yes. So I think that is also which tells us about this art of dying also. रविंद्र आप पल्लवी मिश्रा को अनम्यूट कर सकते हैं Uh, it's very long. It would be great, uh, Pallavi Mishra ji, if you can read it, it would be great to hear from you. Uh, Pallavi ma'am, please unmute. Uh, basically, she has talked about that concept of yours where you have, mm -hmm. you know, that the intersection of ecology and religion. Uh, she has written about that only that as Uttarakhand was tragedy struck during Kedarna disaster, the electronic communications carried over the ideas that generated out of common psyche. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this happens that many times we think that it's not a vaham hai and all and we before, you know, come close to science and believe into mm -hmm. that one. Though the holy town of Kedarnath was completely destroyed, flash floors, the massive tragedy went for people's faith in the divine, the compelling legend of Dhara Devi, uh, Dhari Devi, guardian deity of Uttarakhand, whose idol was removed from her temple hours before the yes. cloud burst. In the legend, Dhara, Dhari Devi is the manifestation of goddess Kali and is revered as the protector of the Char Dhams. Believers per se, um, Uttarakhand had to face the goddess's ire as she was shifted from her original, original abode to make way. For it in our ID project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So again, one more uh, thing, you know, how religion that gets associated with, you know, uh, ecology. And if you really pay attention to that, okay, if, you know, yeah, uh, Pallavi, uh, if you can say something about this point, which you made, you know, you, you added to what Dr. Suman was saying about ecology and religion. 
Yes, ma'am. That was just an observation. Like uh, to add on to whatever Madam has said about the um, uh, the ideas or the myths that um, the uh, scientific community says that they are mythical things. But these myths they help in uh, uh, you can we can say that they help in protecting the natural sites. Uh, because uh, in the hills, basically, these natural sites are um, protected by um, are protect some kind of belief system is involved. Mm -hmm. And through that belief system, those particular natural sites like Bugyals are there in, uh, mm -hmm. in Uttarakhand, uh, pastoral fields. So uh, there, uh, uh, you can, we can say that uh, there is a ritual of not talking aloud, not speaking aloud. And also one has to walk very softly over the Bugyals because it is uh, the local people, they believe that there are gods residing over there and their sleep or their meditation it would get disturbed That's if uh, people walk or talk or uh, very loudly over those reasons. So all these things, this uh, 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 we can say unwelcome in intervention of people of outsiders uh, they help in the protection of lakes uh, lakes and uh, the water bodies mountains and hills and these things were important uh, though they have they have a conventional belief conventional values of their own but they help in the conservation of uh, uh, nature and uh, natural resources also so um, this was the Dhari Devi. Uh, I, Dhari Devi is a temple which is is mm -hmm. it is rebuilt in the Srinagar mm -hmm. of Uttarakhand. And uh, he uh, in, the belief is that uh, the when the Dhari Devi uh, the Dhari Devi's temple was removed from its original place uh, because one uh, project was the government had undertaken one project. Uh, so since it, she was she was shifted from her original abode, mm -hmm. so the, uh, the this that was the reason why Uttarakhand saw that tragedy um, yeah. uh, of flash floods. And that's very interesting because people, you know, it's uh, they live that reality. Yes, uh, ma'am. Yes, you ma know, and it's making exactly. way for you know uh, those resources that are not being used for the people there. Yes, yes. You know, a dam will, uh, you know, have uh, maybe make water or hydroelectricity for uh, a state uh, much, much further away. And or maybe the roads and, you know, the places are op opening up uh, to tourists from outside. So it's, yes, in a way, helping them with money, yes, but the costs are too high. Yes, so, and they understand that. So, yes. Yes, but this is also really that, that might be one reason why temples are usually built at higher places uh, yes. in the over the mountains so yes. that the human inter intervention is not very direct. True. So, thank you so much, ma'am. I liked thank your you so much, I very much liked this your presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Pallavi, for uh, your mm -hmm. and your valuable uh, you know, inputs. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, my friend Ravindra, for correcting me that yeah it's not the end of the life but it's the completion of the life thank you and i'll take that as a note uh muskan uh okay muskan is also with us uh thank you muskan for being with us she is the student of uh, ma'am ma'am was talking about who is as uh, <laughs> so uh okay and uh, where is she now right now she's at uh, she's in canada documenting the same rituals there and so, I think it's midnight there, oh, and she has the yes. habit to join this. Thank you, Ms. Khan. And that shows your love towards your guide and your mentor. Uh, there, man, there are uh, so many, there are so many, you know, <laughs> compliments which talk about, you know, that how you know beautiful thank you. Thank you for this was. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Said Mubin has said a lecture that brings out the simple nuances of populations in a detailed analysis. Thank you, Dr. Suman. So, uh, as I said that, you know, this was so engaging, uh, engaging, and I still want to talk about it, you know, but the time is yeah. running. Uh, you know, uh, just one thing I want to mm -hmm. add, that is, again, my personal experience is about mental well-being. My mother has some issues, and, you know, when she's, uh, you know, the happiest one, which is the happiest stage, when she sings, when she sings, when she sings. Oh. So, uh, and you know because that time she forgets everything and I think it gives her that 
uh, that chance to be herself, you know, be when herself. she does not have to filter, when she does not have to keep any boundaries, when she yeah. can be who she is. And she so, completely gets lost into that one. So, you know, uh, very, uh, you know, many times it happens that, okay, if it's a folk, it's a gana, a geet, and we don't really have those eyes to see that. We don't have those ears to listen to those messages, which these, you yeah. know, traditions. It's much therapeutic in nature. Yeah. So, you know, uh, thank you for giving us those eyes to see deeply what is there into these oral traditions and to you know listen to what is, you know, uh, there beyond that words and, you know, that just, you know, that entertaining things and all. So um, thank you for giving me this platform also to vocalize all these things. Thank you so much. So uh, now uh, I'll take this um, time and opportunity to convey formal vote of thanks uh, as we have uh, come to the end of this uh, session. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'll uh, thank uh, our you know uh, speaker for the session, Dr. Suman, and really thank you. And we are really grateful that you know you accepted the proposal. And I think Musma Muskan was the one. You know, I talked yes. to her that about you. That can you guys come because you know I heard a lot about her your work. I read about that also. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, and thank you, Muskan, for you know giving me this chance to interact with her. So really, thank you so much for coming here and for you know enlightening not me but all our you know wonderful participants also. I also uh, thank our principal sir, Professor Gyantosh Kumar Jha, who uh, is a person with uh, this uh, wisdom, this this ideology, who wants to go beyond these you know curriculum and all, and he'll every time come up with some idea for the refresher courses, which is going to be interesting, which is going to be engaging, as well as it's going to be very enlightening also. Last time when we had a refresher course, he gave us this idea that why not we talk about cinema and all. And then we had that one. Then this was the one, okay, yeah, we should talk something about folk cultures, very rich, you know, starting from the Shastras and all. Uh, so really thank you so much, sir, for, you know, giving us this freedom uh, that we can go beyond the curriculum and can do something, you know, experimented, uh, you know, something experimental like this. I'll also uh, like to thank our IQAC coordinator, Professor Vinita Tuli, who with uh, Professor Anjali, uh, with her team, had worked on this whole idea and, you know, how is this idea is going to work, how this is going to be implemented. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Vinita ma'am and Anjali ma'am for, you know, making this whole idea work in this beautiful way. Uh, I'll also... Um, Thank my friends and my dear colleagues, uh, Mr. Ravinder Pant and Dr. Shiva Chandra uh, from the technical team who really help us for this smooth functioning of this session. Thank you. And obviously, my vote of thanks won't be complete without our wonderful participants um, who, you know, uh, listen to, you know, that with that passion. Because, you know, all these messages which get reflected <laughs> every now and then, they tell us that, you know, how engaged they are, how you know, uh, active they are during the session. So really, thank you so much, participants, for, you know, this one, uh, this, you know, this active, uh, full of zeal participation. Really, thank you. And uh, now uh, we'll uh, move towards our next session. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Very soon, we'll be starting the next session. Thank you, ma'am. Once again. Thank you.